Benson started working. Yeah. Let's see. Good evening. My name is Corey Golub, KU1U. I was asked to come in and do a talk about etiquette, something I'm very passionate about. So I work for the 911 Bureau. Uh, I've been involved in amateur radio for 25 years. I got my ticket when I was in eighth grade. I was a no code then, N O. Now I'm a no code K N O W. I really enjoy Morse code. I enjoy Jordan. Every turn it down. I enjoy Sorry. every opportunity to communicate. Communication is like a lost art. So, a few objectives to go over. It's going to be a challenge for me to talk 20 to 30 minutes. I could really talk 40 hours about this. I, I just I love the hobby. So many facets to it. But we're going to talk about technical elements, how understanding those can improve your communication. Proper etiquette, setting an example for others. We should lead by example. Knowing how procedural operation can streamline communication. Is anyone involved in Mars at all? Was. Was. Okay. Doesn't get as you know more procedural than that, right? right. You get your communication done and the net is closed. Move on. All right. Say what you need to say, move on. There is no rag chewing. There is no banter back and forth. You communicate, get your message, pass it, done. And awareness of good housekeeping, we'll get into that. And just overall projecting a positive image, right? We represent multiple things. First, we represent ourselves, right? Hopefully we hold ourselves in high esteem. I would hope. But we also represent amateur radio. People are listening. Even people who are not hams listen. So what we say, what we do, how we act, is important because we want people to join us. Every now and then I'll hear somebody say, oh, it's a dying hobby. Well, maybe you're not listening to the right part, the band, but for that perception of a dying hobby, we want more people involved. So how do we get them involved if we're not having good etiquette? We want to be on our best behavior. So we had to learn some science when we took our test, didn't we? Right? <clears throat> Don't dispute the science. Let the science work in your advantage. What is more effective, using a 5-watt radio or a 50-watt mobile? 50-watt mobile, right? More power is going to help you out. A better gain antenna. Think of it like a pulley system, right? It's all in how you configure it, right? If you configure things a certain way, you're going to get more gain. More gain is going to give you more power, right? More signal. So I like to allude that to like a pulley system, right? You have a rope, if you configure that a certain way, it's making that same rope more powerful, isn't it? And antennas are like real estate. Location, location, location. What's gonna work better, having it up on a hill or in a valley? Hill, it's about location. And it's also, depending on what frequency you want, you know, right? You want the right tool to do the right job. I always tell people, invest in the antenna, not the radio. Yes, it's nice to have a great radio, but if you have a choice between antenna and radio, I say go for the antenna. You want that antenna to work for you. Multiple things about doing that. Less wear and tear, right? You can run your radio at lower power and make the antenna do the work, right? So it prolongs the life of your equipment. And to antenna polarization, I talk a lot about that with corrections officers, police officers, because they don't know a thing about antenna polarization. And I don't know how much amateur radio operators pay attention to polarization, but it is so important. Most of our problems are caused by us being lazy. Laziness has consequences. Anyone talk like this? <laughs> anyone see anyone talk like that before? Safety. Is that optimal? No. How bad is that? 20 dB, 20 dB deficit, which equates to about seven times your power. You're disadvantaging yourself seven times by doing this. And people just think it's a simple, harmless little thing. Or I'm cool. You're not cool, right? I got it to the side. No. If you have vertical polarization, 
radio should be vertically polarized, right? Right? Work with a similar system. I mean, there are times when you want to be horizontal, right? VHF, you know, a lot of people don't think of VHF as being horizontal polarization, but if you, anyone do weak signal for, are you horizontally polarized for weak signal? Sure. Absolutely. Makes a difference, especially with weak signal. You're like this, guess what? You're going to be an even weaker signal, right? So let the technology, let the common sense work for you, okay? The modes and means of operation, does it fit your goal? Sometimes it's lowest common denominator. Do we have a lot of modes in amateur radio? We're in a VHS beta max war, are we? Times 10. Right, we were talking earlier when I came in. D-Star, DMR, Fusion. Goes beyond that for amateur radio, right? What else? P25, Nixden, countless modes. Oh my goodness, we can't play in the sandbox together. So when you're trying to achieve commonality, what's the best thing? Get the common denominator. You take a poll, what does everyone have? What's a good thing to do in Maine? Maybe two meter analog, right? You're going to maximize your use of getting people involved. If you're doing an event, do you want to make it so restricted? Uh, we're going to be on P25 on VHF. Well, good luck. That's expensive equipment, isn't it? So think commonality, lowest common denominator. What does everyone have? And what is your goal? You know, hunting analogy. So. A 22 LR, are you going to use that for everything? Or are you going to use that for certain cases if you're hunting? You're going to use that for certain things. You want the right tool for the right job. Are you going to go moose hunting with a 22 long rifle? If you do, you don't, you're only going once. <laughs> right? You want the right tool. That's why amateur radio is so successful. We have a lot of diversity in the hobby. Right? Low band operates different than VHF, operates different than UHF. And you get into the gigahertz. I like all of it. And each one has its own purpose. You know, if you're in doing an operation in a building, where do we want to be? Well, UHF, right? Better building penetration. But if we're doing something outside, long distances, probably want HF. And depending on the distance, depending on the situation, you might use HF. Maybe 10, uh, maybe 10 meters, six meters. Figure out where are you trying to talk to? What's gonna reach that best? You have multiple tools at your disposal. What is going to work for you? Repeater's great, but sometimes keep it simple, right? The KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid, right? I got the last part down straight, the stupid part, but you know, sometimes simplex might work better. Maybe you can't get into a repeater, but, but you know, Rich is right here. I can talk to him better on Simplex, right? It depends on what your situation is. You have to have situational awareness. What are you trying to achieve? Always think, what is your goal? What are you trying to do? Being prepared. Do you have a plan? What's the game plan? What are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to do? How are you going to get there? Work towards that goal. Do you have a backup plan? You just bring one radio, one battery? Do you have a backup radio? Do you have a backup battery? Is your backup battery with you? I've gone to events where somebody's like, oh, my battery's in the car. Well, what good is your battery in the car if you're right here? You have to use this sometimes. This is a very important tool. We need to use it. All right? Is your equipment programmed right? Oh, my goodness. Right? Sometimes people get flustered very easily in the hospital. What might be easy to one person is difficult to another. It's all on their comfort level, but you have to take the time to train yourself. Learn your equipment. When you go to an event, does anyone actually have the manual for their radio with them? Maybe that's something to think about. I do. Hey, you know, I gotta put this thing in the crossband repeater? Gee, I don't remember the last time I did that. Maybe I need to get the manual out. Because if you don't do it often, you forget. You don't use it, you lose it. Sometimes it's nice to have a manual of all your radios. Because we do we all have the same equipment? I don't have any Royal Piece of One. I have a Winko, Kenwood, all the, you know. Sometimes it's nice if you have all the same stuff, you kind of know how they operate, but each one is really different. 
Yezu? Oh my goodness. You get lost in the menus on Yezu. It's like a love-hate relationship with Yezu. I like the radios, but you know, sometimes you get lost in those menus. Where's the Kenwood? Pretty intuitive. Yeah, pretty intuitive right? Where he talked about lowest common denominator. Availability and affordability. Now I get into debates with people about Echolink. Some people say, right, Echolink, and some people cringe, like, that's not real ham radio. At the end of the day, you know what? Sometimes it's a supplement. I'm more interested, you know, it's a means of communication. I'm more interested in the etiquette. Are you operating correctly? That's what I I value higher than somebody who wants to be snobbish and say, well, this is an amateur radio. Or some people will say, well, Actually, I heard one of the best quotes was from the previous ARRL director. He said, somebody who works on equipment and puts it on the air, you know, a lot of these people who just maintain the repeater, you never hear them on the radio. They're no less a ham than somebody who's on the repeater all the time. We earned our license, we're all hams. Some people don't actually like to talk. We can't be an introverted group, right? So, you're still a ham. You're no less a ham if you don't talk, it's fine. Some people, they don't like talking. Some people want to do computer mode. Some people just want to build equipment. It's a vast hobby. There's something for everyone in this hobby. But it should be available and affordable. That's why analog is the go-to. It's the least expensive, right? And then you get into the digital modes, it gets a little pricier. But if you don't have the money, I mean, I was in eighth grade, I didn't really have money to buy the radio. I mean, if Echolink was available at the time, I'd be like, all right, I'm, it, it gets my foot in the door. And then as I get older and I get funds, I can now buy equipment. You know, there's a lot to be said for what you actually buy, too. How many people have a boat bank? Great bang for the buck receiver. That's my opinion. This is my opinion. Great bang for the buck receiver. But as a transmitter, I'd rather invest in something if I'm going to transmit, right? But for the money, you can't beat the price. It's like, well, for that price, i got to have two of them, right? So sometimes you get what you pay for. So, you know, we talked about D-Star. D-Star is probably one of the more expensive digital modes, but I love the radios. I mean, I've got the D-74. Great radio, but it's it's also a versatile radio. An HF receiver, I can listen to CW, sideband. Uh, it does a ton of stuff. TNC built into it, packet. It's a full-featured radio. The hobby is what, you know, you get out what you put in. You re I believe that. If you're going to put a lot of stuff into this hobby, you're going to get out of it. So some people might say, oh, I don't want, you hear the argument, I'm not going to buy that because uh, this, well, if I use something a lot, if I use it every day, several days a week, I can justify buying it, right? So if you can justify your purchases, that's fine. We have to agree to disagree in this hobby, right? I mean, it's, it's tough in politics right now, trying to agree to disagree, but with a hobby, you know, if... Rich likes AM, I'm not going to say, oh, I hate AM. I'm not going to fault him for that. That's what he likes. I'm just saying, I don't know if you like AM, but I'm just saying, argument. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean I have to poo-poo it, right? It has a unique sound. It does have unique It does. A lot of the audiophiles are big. That's, yeah. they crave the sound, you know. I get into big into digital stuff, and everyone argues, oh, the, dig the audio quality. I'm not into it for the audio quality. I'm into it for the simultaneous transmission of multiple things at once. Right? So maximizing your participation, right? You want to have a mode and an operation that is going to get a lot of people on board. So analog is usually where you go. Usually two meters is where we start. All right. Authority. You're doing an event. Oh, we're going to do it in the extra portion of the band. Did you just dwindle your participation? Perhaps, right? Why not do it where everyone can operate? We have to think about these things. Where can everyone play? Where can we maximize our participation? The more people we get involved, everyone everyone wants to have a vested interest, right? Like, oh, that's I can't operate there. They're not gonna they're not gonna participate. And they go away, you never hear from them again. You have to include people. And years ago, ARRL had the, had the saying, when all else fails. I think that's the best line ever for amateur radio. Because really it is, right? When all else fails. 
we have so many tools at our disposal <clears throat> that we can switch gears and go into something else. Another band, another frequency, another mode. We have a lot of tools at our disposal. Procedural operation, we talked about Mars. They're very effective in their communication. It sounds professional. Right? The title of this was taking the amateur out of amateur radio. What comes to mind with amateur? When you think, when you just hear amateur without any context, what do you think? JV. JV, like juvenile? <laughs> very, very little experience. Little experience? Yes. The opposite of professional, right? You think somebody's an amateur, they don't know what they're doing. It's ironic, we're called amateurs. And sometimes you tune in some places and you hear amateur activity. Tune no further than 3910, my friends. That is amateur central, unfortunately, right? We want to combat that. We want to show that we are amateurs, but we're actually professionals at our craft. Amateur radio is our craft, because we know how to communicate. We know how to pass a message. When phone lines go down, when cell phones go down, internet goes down, we know how to communicate and do it effectively. A procedural words really help to make that a concise, easy-flowing process. Having a directed net. You have an air traffic controller, so to speak. They're the ones who are there like the dispatcher. They are coordinating who should be passing traffic to whom. Maybe you have them go off frequency, return, check back in with us. They determine how the operation should flow. Things get out of line, they're the one who bring the hammer down and they, they have that discipline. A net control station, maybe you have an alternate net control. Something happens in that control station, lightning strike takes out their station. You have a backup, right? We talked about preparedness. You have a backup to your plan, alternate net control. Hopefully they've been following along and marking all the check-ins. They can pick up the slack until that control can get back on and operate. They maintain order and control. Because sometimes people, <coughs> people in this hobby like to ramble sometimes, don't they? Right? They'll tell you the whole life story, they'll time out the repeater and keep on talking. And if they don't understand, they clarify. So some of the procedural words, over. I, I can't stand Hollywood does this all the time in the movies, over and out. Oh my goodness, I cringe when I hear that, over and out. People are like, why do you get mad? I said, it's like, okay, you're driving down the road and there's a red light, green light. Right? They contradict each other. Over means my message is done. I am expecting a reply. Out means communication is done, move on, we're on to the next thing. The communication has ceased. Wait, it's kind of a professional way to say you have to pause for something. But wait, it, it sounds professional. Then you'll hear a little pause. You know not to key up. Break, that's also used sometimes as a pause. Or to break between, uh, anyone do preamble messages, uh, any NTS messages in the traffic system? You, does anyone participate in that? So you might use break. So in Morse code, it's BT followed together. Da, 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 da. That's kind of a separation between the different sections of the message. Right, you have your preamble. You have your address. Then you have the body of the text and you have your signature. You have breaks in between so that they know they're separated. Affirmative, I don't like to say yes on the radio. It's short. I don't clip myself on the radio. However, I know many people who do. So you might not hear the yes. I like affirmative and it sounds more professional. Same with no, you don't have to say no. Say negative. Mayday, that's used for emergencies. That's when things hit the fan, right? Quick history lesson, anyone know where Mayday comes from? French. Very good, French. Absolutely. So it's a reflexive verb. We're going back to our high school, college, uh, college high school days of je me mayday. Well, you take it out the E as je mayday, mayday. They anglicize the mayday. I need help, I help me, essentially. Mayday with anglicized to be Mayday. So that's where it comes from. It means literally, help me. 
kudos to him. Only makes sense. <laughs> Things we want to try to avoid. What's your handle, good buddy? Right? Handle. I sometimes people, you know, habit is tough to break sometimes. We hear, you know, it comes from the C B that nothing wrong with C B. I mean that's where I start. Who here started with C B before they got into ham radio? I did. But C B tends to have, unfortunately, a negative connotation, doesn't it? And the public always confuse us with C B operators, don't they? Mm. All the time. Well, it's like a C B. Um yeah, 2%. Yeah, okay. It's like 2% CB, yes. But there's so much more. It's like an infomercial. Wait, there's more. Right? So, what is your name? Instead of what's your handle? Right. Q signals. Q signals are not meant for voice communication. You hear that from time to time. It's meant for Morse code and digital. Okay? To abbreviate it. 10 codes, this isn't public safety, we don't use 10 codes. The problem with 10 codes anyway is they're different everywhere, right? By department, if we're talking public safety, they're different by department, they're different by county, by state. We don't use 10 codes. And obviously offensive language, right? Turn the 3910, you'll get your fill there. But we should not be using that on amateur radio. Etiquette, right? We have two ears, one mouth. We should listen twice as much as we talk. Right? Make sure the frequency is free before you key. Right? Is somebody else talking? Is what you have to say more important than what's being said? We want to prioritize our traffic, right? Can what I say wait? Or do I have to say it right now? using proper NATO phonetics. It would drive people crazy at my work because I'd tell them, I come into work, I talk in the radio, I'd be using NATO phonetics, I get to work and I use the LEPD. I, it's like a switch. I just know where I am, I start using LEPD, get back in my car to go home and I'm back on NATO phonetics. I just, it's seamless. I just know where I am. And a lot of people, just, they have trouble flipping. Right? There's such a thing as LAPD phonetics. LAPD phonetics is a real thing. So that's what the police officers use. So in amateur radio, we would say alpha. LAPD would be Adam. And listen, I'm a scanner listener too, any of you that. And then you get some service. local variation. So a local variation. Yep. So NATO would be Bravo. LAPD would be boy. No, that, I believe that but was my Boston. origins. We of, say Boston. The of radio was uh, listening to SCADA and uh, public yeah. service, and that's what, first so that's all it burned into my mind, yeah. but the uh, the NATO. C is Charles is, uh, and LAPD, where it's Charlene for NATO. Yes. The biggest thing is not cutting yourself off. You want to key up the radio, right? You want to pause, because you want to make sure you're, when you, People are talking, sometimes I hear people talk, you know, if I'm with somebody, I can hear them talking before I even hear the mic click on my phone. Mm -hmm. I already hear you're cutting yourself off. Key up, wait. Know your system. Do you have multiple repeaters that have to link up also? Doesn't take long, but you want to give it just enough time. Because you've wasted time. If you have to repeat yourself, what did you save at the end of the day? So key up, pause, wait like half a second even. Say your message, pause again. People forget that. And then unkey. You want to make sure you have integrity in your message. It was sent in its entirety. All right. We have a PTT button on the side, right? Push to talk. Well, for those who like to talk a lot, I call it the RTL. It's release to listen, all right? Mm -hmm. Stop talking. <laughs> you got to unkey so somebody else has a chance to talk. Right? We don't want to keep rambling. Remember I talked about rambling? Rambling is not a good thing. Because sometimes what happens when you ramble, you get yourself into trouble sometimes too, right? Mm -hmm. And then you ramble so much you for, you forgot what you were even trying to say. Sometimes if you have to take the time to think and compose your message, take the time to do that. Even if it's 10, 15 seconds, what am I trying to say? Take the time, figure it out, and send your message. Letting the, the 
Peter tail drop. That's important. Falmouth kind of defies that. Falmouth <laughs> is a it's a beast in itself. It doesn't work there because it has the longest tail known to humankind. All right. At least the tone doesn't last the whole duration. <laughs> it. I'm, I don't know why it is so long. I, I never understood that. But people often don't know why it's important to let it drop. Somebody sets up a crossband repeater. They don't have a chance to key up until the repeater is dropped because as long as the repeater is talking, their crossband repeater is also transmitting. Echo link as well. Echo link as well. So you don't have a chance to communicate until the tail drops and now you have it. Remember, this is half duplex, folks. One side is talking at a time. Half duplex. Let it drop. Plus, it's a good reminder to let it drop so that you're not keying. Too much quick keying, right? I hear it all the time. It's probably one of the worst habits in the hobby. Quick keying. I mean, people keying up before you even hear the courtesy go. I mean, it, it's bad. You need to, like, let the airway breathe a little bit. No quick keying. Allow other people to come in. Maybe somebody has priority track. <clears throat> so here's a look at the NATO phonetics, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Papa, Quebec. Some people say Quebec, but like in Mars, it's kind of ingrained into us to say Quebec. Romeo, Sierra, Tango, Uniform, Victor, Whiskey, X-Ray, Yankee, and Zulu. You know, even numbers have phonetics. Nine. Ever, ever hear somebody say niner? And then you laugh. You're like, yeah, they said niner. Where did that come from? You're you're one for one. <laughs> Mash. <laughs> Think about World War One, World War Two. Who were we fighting against? Germany. The Germans. In Germany. Nine sounds nine like no. Nine is no. In German, so. So. To get away from sounding German, they use niner to differentiate from no. Makes sense. Anyone at any time a member of FISTS? Accuracy transcends speed. Great motto. One of the best mottos I can really think of. Right? It's not about the speed, it's about the integrity of the message. Take your time to make sure the receiving station is understanding the message. In Morse code, it's better to send it slower than faster. Because again, you have to repeat yourself, did you save any time? Yeah. In accuracy, even talking about Morse code, use straight keys. Yep. Some sloppy fists out there, right? Okay. But what in the world was that? I use a straight, I can't use a buzz to save my life. I can't use the buttons, but I do like a straight key and I like the iambic paddles. But, you know, accuracy, are you actually sending a nice, clean message? It applies there. Don't speak faster than you can write. Right? Some people are old school and they're going to write things down. Right? Don't talk faster than somebody can write. Concise transmission. <clears throat> Brevity is your friend. <laughs> Don't say in 25 words what you can achieve in 10. Right? Keep it brief. Move that message along. You want to ramble. And also, what's the benefit of having a concise message? Worst case scenario, you're on battery power. Is your station going to last longer if you talk more or talk less? less, right? Because it takes more power to transmit than it does to receive. So if you talk less, guess what? You're prolonging the life of your equipment. If you only have battery power, you don't have any generators, you're just using battery until you get something back, keep your message concise. I like this quote, wise men speak because they have something to say, fools speak because they have to say something. Right? Some people just talk because they have to talk. Oh my word. If you don't have anything to contribute, you know, think. 
Does what I have to say contribute to the mission of what we're doing? If it doesn't, you know what, if you're doing an event, does somebody have to know, oh, there's a uh, squirrel crossing the road? I don't need to know that. It doesn't apply to this bike event. There's a biker that needs a mechanic. Okay, that I need to know. I don't need to know. I don't need to play by play on every little thing. I need uh, I need a shirt. This is the wrong shirt size. I don't really need to hear that on the repeater. <laughs> All right, you can get in touch with the coordinator of the event later. We can figure it out. I don't like hearing senseless traffic. Right. Does your transmission contribute to the goal? Remember that. Is what I'm is what I'm saying meaningful? Does it mean something? Providing and receiving honest feedback. Anyone who knows me knows I will be as honest as possible. Right, Rich? I think it's called brutal honesty. <laughs> brutal honesty, yeah. I'm a master at brutal honesty. But in all seriousness, I'll get on nets and I'll, I'll just kind of listen. And if somebody signals, really terrible. Somebody should be letting them know that. I can't fix what I don't know. If that was me operating, I fully expect to hear, hey, you're you're not as strong as I normally hear you in the repeater. I don't know if you changed something or maybe water got in the coax. There could be something wrong. I don't know. Wouldn't you want to know? And maybe it's something detrimental to your system, right? You want to fix it. Mic placement. We all have, we're all unique individuals, right? Some have a boisterous voice, some have a little mouse voice, right? You have to adjust. There's no set way. You have to be exactly three inches from the mic. No. Trial by error, right? Know where, just practice. Practice listening to yourself. Uh, if you have a boisterous voice, you obviously want to be further away from it. If you are a quiet talker, you want to be up closer. Right. Adjust as necessary. One of my biggest pet peeves, avoid, I want you to avoid, uh, um, uh, I'm working. I don't like hearing us and us, right? Go back there, please. Because what does that insinuate? You don't know what you're talking about sometimes, right? If you say on, um, three boys, what are you struggling to say? So. Try to work on if you if you feel like you're going to be saying uh, uh, I'm key the I'm key the mic for a moment and then key back up. Compose yourself. All right. Again, position of the mic. Right. We don't want it shoved down our throat. If you overmodulate, what happens if you overmodulate? You clip the audio. All right. Another one. I know somebody who. Uh, Whenever they talk, right before they unkey, their nose breathing, right? I, it's like, no. Where is this mic? Where are you putting this? And I don't want to know where you're putting it, but I don't want to hear your nose breathing. Just good housekeeping, right? We talked about getting people involved in this hobby. It's a wonderful hobby. It's a great hobby to be involved in. And we want people to join it, be a part of it. So how we project our image is crucial. Right. You don't want to be showing up at an event, tattered sweatpants and holes in your shirt, unkept hair. You want to look somewhat presentable, right? Because you are representing yourself and the hobby. How you conduct yourself, how you talk to people, even. It's more than just being on the radio. When you're off the radio, right, we're engaged with people. I don't want to be hearing people say off-color comments, jokes, something that's going to make somebody uncomfortable. We find that sometimes with uh, bike events. A uh, ham might be teamed up in a SAG vehicle with a driver who's not a ham, right? Maybe what this person is saying is making the driver uncomfortable. We don't want to create an uncomfortable, a hostile environment. We want to work together to achieve the end goal. So how we conduct ourselves is very important. Good hygiene. Sounds simple, but I'm not. Uh, 
Deodorant is not expensive, folks. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. It has to be said, right? Hygiene is important. We have to take care of ourselves, right? We represent ourselves. We want, we want to project a good image. And that includes all the senses, smell included. All right. Proper dress attire we already talked about. Good housekeeping in terms of your equipment. <clears throat> Is your equipment in professional working order? I've seen some setups where it's like, oh my goodness, what frayed wire mess is this? It looks like it's gonna start an electrical fire. Right? You want your equipment to also look professional. Did you test it before you actually showed up to an event? <laughs> oh, I grabbed the radio that, ah, the mic actually, it, it, it'll key up every third time I key it. Maybe you not, might not wanna bring that to an event. Maybe you wanna actually get that fixed. Use another radio. I hate when people hold the antenna, the radio by the antenna. That's another pet peeve of mine. Right? The antenna is so crucial, right? I talked so much about the antennas at the beginning. That is how your signal radiates. If you grab it and hold it by the antenna, it's like saying I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna carry my gun around with the, by the barrel. I don't wanna do that, right? Take good care of your equipment. If you snap your antenna, you might not even know you broke it by holding it by the antenna. That's how the signal radiates. If you break that, you're gonna cause issues. So I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, it's because I broke the antenna on my radio playing around with it. Avoid pulling cords. You know, sometimes somebody will pull a cord and it wears, you find you're, you keep replacing uh, a mic cord on one of your radios. I was guilty of this years ago with one of my 220 radios, how I had it placed, ended up keep, I just kept having it, just enough tension where it kept fraying. It's like, you know, I gotta think better about this. I need to take care of my equipment. When you go to an event, you have the proper credentials. It's important nowadays, isn't it? Everything's about credentials. You know, somebody showing up maybe, uh, so with your group, so WSSM, do you have credentials at all for, for events or anything, no? So that's something to maybe think about, like everyone has a standard name tag or something that identifies a common group. Well, do you guys do like an Aries Racies operation? That's separate, right? Aries Racies operation yeah, is separate? separate yeah. okay. So that would, that would be more for reason. that kind of thing. But if you go out to an event, you know, even a credential of having a banner, something that looks legitimate. I'm sure, do you have like a banner that you put up? So that's a type of credential. Right? So we just want to remember to act nice to one another, right? Be kind, be courteous. We want people to come into the hobby, not go running the other direction, right? We want a hobby that we can grow not diminish. That is all I have. Any questions? Okay. Thank you.